Aloha Mai and welcome to another episode of Aloha Authentic with Kamakopili, Hawaii's only TV show where we feature our own local artisans, our own cultural practitioners and community members to have them share their story and have you connect more with Hawaiian culture and our lifestyle here in Hawaii. As we all know, Hawaii holds something very unique compared mm. to the rest of the world. So the yeah. whole point of this show is for you to learn, for you to connect and hopefully for you to find more on your own. Now, I'm... <laughs> We only have such a little bit of time and I'm super stoked, chicken skin. Last, uh, uh, the last segment, we were able to speak with Auntie Manu Meyer about Hawaiian epistemology. This episode, we're continuing to stay in the Meyer family and speak with her sister, Auntie Maile Meyer of Namea, Hawaii. Aloha, Auntie. Aloha, kawaka. Oh, and next you so time, much. you can interview my sister Meliana, yes. who's an artist and There's art educator, such and a, Luana. Such a great Moana. family who contributes to the Hawaiian community. Yeah. So thank you very much for allowing us to be in your store, first of all, and out of Welcome. your busy schedule. Welcome. Happy, happy to have you. So there's so much things to talk about, and we're having a little bit of a kuka session before this. Um, but first and foremost, Namea Hawaii. You know, a lot of us are being more familiar with the store. A lot of visitors mm -hmm. are coming and checking out your store. Mm -hmm. What does Namea Hawaii mean, and what is it? Well, Namea Hawaii is the next generation of native books, native books Namea Hawaii, and it's a place that's filled with all locally made, Hawaiian made art and products. And it's, for me, it's a pico and a community center to bring people who share our value system. So living economy, gifting and sharing economy, and appreciation for rooted culture, for Hawaiians, and things that represent who and how we are in the world. So when we talk about native books, it's not just books here. I mean, yep, yep art pieces from a yep. whole bunch of native artists. Absolutely, we have all kinds of wood, stone, bone, shell, everything in between, all kinds of products that come from our aina, lots of, of uh, beauty, wellness, uh, value added things that are, you know, mamaki teas and different kinds of things and a lot of hula implements, clothing. We're just manifesting the vision of capacity. We have capacity. This is not, we are not a lacking people in creativity and in our own personal affirmation. So I started Native Books because when I came home from the continent, uh, I worked at Bishop Museum and I didn't realize how many Hawaiian authors there were, how much we had written. And so I began my own quest in, in I started with Nanike Kumu out of Queen Milkalani Trust and just reading that book again and reading Hawaiian Antiquities and by David Malo and Kamakao and all of the incredible work by Tutu Kavena in um, Pukui the Olelo no Eau, just unbelievable material that many, many people didn't know were written by Hawaiians. And the first place I went with books was with a newborn child, Emma who's 29 now, and I went to Auntie Manu, my sister Manu's Hawaiian Leadership Development Conference or program in Hilo. Mm -hmm. And this was David Singh was the head of it. So this Napua no Eau came from, so it was a gathering of Hawaiians and many didn't even know either who our Hawaiian authors were. So I went there with Emma on my hip and Hawaiian style passed the baby while I sold books. And I came back with almost a hundred orders for dictionaries, histories, and that's how Native Books started. So that's the beginning. Yeah. And I, then I was up in Kalihi with Barbara Pope, who was part of Ipohaku Press. We put out books about Hawaiian culture. And then we did Native Books and Beautiful Things with Nakeu Awai, who's still part of our original. He was part of the hui that made up Native Books and Beautiful Things in downtown. So Tutuvi, Kalin Kimura, Nola Nahulu, Betty Mu'u, Nakeu Awai, they all stayed with us all these years. So so, th so we're in 2018 yep. now, but you started this about 30 years ago, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm sure then and now is two completely state of beings. How was it as a Native Hawaiian entrepreneur trying to step into the retail industry at that time? Well, you know, it's funny because in my mind, I never think of myself as retail because you cannot, for me, I don't want to force people to buy things they don't want. I just want community to gather and when they need something that we have, they will think of us because we used to do and still do. It's a smaller space now. We're in the old Brookstone. But then it was hilarious. Um, there were not a lot of women entrepreneurs, certainly not Hawaiian women entrepreneurs. And I had two young children and I did 
many, many events on the weekend selling books directly out of the back of my car. My husband would take care of the kids. And um, that's how we just started interacting in community. And through the years, people have been so supportive of Native books. And when we joined with mostly Hawaiian entrepreneurs in downtown um, Honolulu, the energy was that we could exist because we were a collective, because we were collaborative. I, I don't know how to work um, by myself, actually. I don't like it. I don't like the model. It's not something I'm used to. I come from a big family. We all live next to all of my mother's siblings. So Hawaiian style, we were like a kauhale on that street. And so um, I only think collectively. I'm oriented that way. So. Every iteration of Namea, Hawaii, and Native Books, and uh, Native Books and Beautiful Things was with a group of people in mind. So here we are sitting in Namea, Hawaii. There's plenty of stuff going on. There's always, I always feel like something's wrong if it's <laughs> quiet in here. Because, <laughs> you know, we, we need to be learning from each other. As Hawaiians, we need to gather easily, comfortably, be together. So Namea, Hawaii's always been that kind of entity. When we were at Ward Warehouse, we had three times the space we have now. And before we closed, the six months before we closed, we tried a grand experiment and we took on 10 different retail spaces <laughs> because it was all bombed out. Nobody cared. You know, everybody was like, whoa, whatever they're doing well. down there. It's, it's, and I'm like, what? Free parking, urban court. Nah, the Hawaiians were going to, you know, bust it out. So yeah. we had a work, a maker space that our Lauhala gang went into. We had a studio spaces, we had gallery spaces, we had value added food, we had cultural pride, we had Native Knowledge Center. We tried to grow contemporary gallery, we had um, SPF projects. We tried to grow the presence of how we as a people interact with each other. So it was good fun, exhausting, but. <laughs> <laughs> All worth it though. <laughs> we blew it up and then now we're, we're back to this one location. So, retail as a tool yep. to educate about Hawaiian culture. Absolutely. How effective is that? Well, you know, it allows us. I people say, well, why don't you, you know, try to appeal to the visitor? I, I'm not targeting visitors. I'm here to hold a center, a core mindset. So I'm always grateful when visitors come. I'm really happy to have them in the store. But I'm here for, for at its core, for our people, for local people, for anyone who has a curiosity about Namea Hawaii things Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just holding steady in this model and thankfully people have supported it and um, we've been able to expand it when we needed to and now we're back to that center. And I look at contemporary entrepreneurs, I look at Bye Bye Collective mm -hmm. as, as a gathering space. I look at, you know, Native Intelligence on Maui, brilliant. Mm -hmm. I look at, you know, the Grand Dames Manu Heli'i. She started her first retail experience at Native Books and Beautiful Things. I think of East Honolulu Clothing Company. You know, all of these people, many Hawaiians who, of course, we can all witness each other understanding how to serve our communities and to still be part of the Hawaiian mindset. We gift a lot of books, a lot of product to people who are doing fundraisers. We try to encourage emerging artists. We have two galleries that we are, a puni space that we're very proud of down on Oahe Street mm -hmm. that has four studios and shows contemporary art. And then Solomon Enos down in Chinatown. He just opened the frontal lobe. So classic Hawaiian style, you know, those places are places where, where artists can gather, we do shows. Mm -hmm. It's a sharing model. You know, Kamaka, it's your nature as well. So we're just trying to amplify who we are. People don't see sharing, gifting. They think it's all about the money. Mm -hmm. It cannot be all about the money. That's money is for strangers. It's for if you don't know. I mean, sure, we want to sell the shirt, but to be able to gift the shirt and you to wear it and, and to tell people, oh, Hawaiian Forest from Hilo, mm -hmm. that has um, a value that makes so much more sense to me. Mm -hmm. So you and I have worked together on different projects, and it is a beautiful thing to manifest our nature as a people on our terms. And that's what entrepreneurship, what I see young entrepreneurs doing, I just get so excited because as Hawaiians, I'm 60 plus, I have baggage. I still have the angry Hawaiian model. You know, every time if I get started, I'm like, I want to rip someone's head off. And that's not going to help us. We need to move to a place of, of forgiveness because we are not going anywhere as a people. We are rooted to this aina and we know who we are. So the more we can affirm this through business, through art, 
my God, the things that we can teach each other by manifesting Solomon Eno's future coastlines, coconuts, the needles still there, the people are there, the water's everywhere, we get them. So we don't have to be afraid of change. I mean, my God, we live through horrific change. And we still are able to eat with these people. You know, we can still do these things. That segue into education is yeah. perfect. Yeah. Books is, <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to lie, to me, books can be very intimidating. No, I have a are. hard time to be inspired to read. Unless yeah. I'm really interested, I don't, I'm not a big fan of reading. No, no, and it's okay. Yeah. You know, we are bombarded with so many ways um, to, to access knowledge. Mm -hmm. And frankly, for me, I always think if our kupuna could still be present for us, we would know this knowledge. Native books wouldn't have to exist. But books are daunting. But the point is they're an access and they're a memory, they're remembrance. So whether we read the book or not, we can access the knowledge when we're ready. So we can learn, I was telling you earlier, I was just at the CNHA conference, extraordinarily vibrant information being learned collectively out of the Leo from Manu Boyd and Deviana McGregor about Prince Kuhio. So, you know, there's books here that will cover his his knowledge, but the stories, your own mama has story, grandma. Your tutu has stories of that time period and what he was put through. So, there's so many ways to access knowledge. When I started Native Books, it was kind of gross, but it was the truth. It was my dead Hawaiian authors, because there were no living Hawaiian authors. Lili Kala is my absolute champion and, and hero, Manawahine, and, and her daughter Punihe, generationally for that kind of scholarship, for Lili Kala to have put Native land and foreign desires into print, for us to be able to read it, and now to see the way she's teaching her mo'opuna and her daughter, the legacy, we're, we're lifelong learners, and books are a form of that knowledge. We, as you know, were almost 100% literate at the turn of the century. So we, we are, are knowledge eaters and learners, and that's how we are in the world. Mm -hmm. So the access to knowledge, books are just one form. Mm -hmm. You and I, we gotta, we gotta do this thing, all of us do. Yeah. Now, you know, you brought up about the angry Hawaiian position. Mm. <laughs> today being a lot more an educated position mm -hmm. and I'm sure a lot mm -hmm. of us I speak for myself I still have that you know and I it's a challenge between the both yep. you, and you also brought up Prince Kuhio so this is a very interesting topic because studying about Prince Kuhio coming from a royal full-blooded Hawaiian his auntie being Queen Lili Kalani going against in battle against the American government to give back the throne to Queen Lili Kalani. Um, being arrested for a year, going on to a self-exile yeah. across the world, coming back and then becoming a Republican in the American United System. States Congress. He knew that's what he had to do. He adapted. Mm -hmm. He understood. He is, you know, he didn't act like a vanquished people. Yeah. He acted like someone who really understood how to stay focused on the needs of his people. Mm -hmm. He had to sub whatever subjugate or humble himself, like Queen Li Okalan. I see those pictures of her having, you know, sharing food with a bunch of missionary descendants, and I just feel like, my God, that must have been brutal. Mm -hmm. But she did that in order to understand and to work with people who took from her. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for us to be um, in our phase of forgiveness, that's a profound thing, Kamaka. And that is what our ancestors were able to do. Mm -hmm. Hill and his brilliance, how did he get to a stage could where he could okay do, that. do Where that. he would come home and the book shared that he would so proudly brag about being an American and inspire others of his people to become an That's how American. we're going to survive. We have to maintain who we are and. It's not an or, it's an and. And he behaved like a Hawaiian through, through his Whatever it was called, it was irrelevant. So is that That's what I think. those issues that revolve around that time, issues of stolen lands, issues of displacing our people and so forth without getting too deep into it, is that what drove you? Is that the drive behind your work? You know, for me, I feel privileged because we, my, my ancestors, the Oluli Ohana and my cousins, we still are rooted in land. We understood that our, our family lands are still with us and passed through matriarchal, through my kupuna. 
but the energy of it it's ours to be of service that is the the role that the aluli ohana played for our ali'i so this is for me the way i can be of service to our people to continue to welcome and i'm in the process myself of of moving into models that are um, bringing in things that we can underwrite and have people you know again not have to be in a western model where I want to be able to make enough money to cover the cost of something and then the profit return to community in in different ways like we're making personal lahala mats now mm -hmm. and having people learn so they can pick hala put them under their feet stand on hala and say I can affirm myself as a Hawaiian in Hawaii mm -hmm. by standing on this hala and do my own good work you know we're, we're metaphoric people we can hold the duality of what what our lives are like mm -hmm. And you know, the idea that who, Kauhale style, we're going to be living differently soon, and those models are ours. They're not foreign to us. There are models, again. So it's interesting to see where people are looking for solutions. They're in water resource management, in science, in, in technology, you know, how you learn, how you grow, through art, through the making of things. People are learning through law. I mean, my God, we have brilliant brilliant Hawaiian intellectuals, PhDs, the things that are coming Western and look at all the voyaging community, the things that, that are wahine who are at the voyaging helm, many of them. We have so many models of our capacity, the olelo that's coming back, it's in our daily language again. We don't have to be getting a PhD at UH in order to speak Hawaiian anymore. Things are coming back to us because of our, our nature as, as people who can learn. and. Speaking out of experience, those who you've mentioned yourself included and in, in your generation of these models of setting examples for the next generations to come have have created avenues maybe that you guys aren't aware of that this new generation can figure so out to take many. down and walk that path to take what you guys have done and continue it. Where do Must. you see the new generation in today's space when, it talk, when we're talking about Hawaiian culture and this Western way of living? You know that the fearlessness of our ancestors, despite everything that happened, just, you know, the ability to believe that it isn't just about money, that the model is only about money. If our entrepreneurs can continue to make sure that that's taken care of and stick with the and model, and it's culturally sound, and it's inclusive, so that everyone can learn from how you are articulating a business as an entrepreneur in today's world. That kind of consciousness of a bigger good that you serve, it's hard not to, um, it's hard to consider that because it requires you to, to be more than just a business. It requires you to understand how connected we all must be. And you know, I'm, I'm married to an extraordinary man who, when he, his name is Michael Broderick and he run, runs the YMCA. And at one time he ran the Hawaii Justice Center and he did a forum on the Akaka Bill. And after reading everything about the Hawaiian community, he came home and he said, you know, my, I think we should tie to the Hawaiian, to the Hawaiian community and give up a portion of, he was willing to give up a portion of his income <laughs> because he felt so badly after he learned mm -hmm. of our history. So I am so appreciative of people who are willing to learn and to know what's happened here. And that should fuel our entrepreneurs to realize, stay steady on who we are. It is our right to be here. <laughs> As a retail, someone yeah. who owns retail and engaging with a lot of customers from around the globe, has there ever been any of those negative responses against you know, Hawaiian culture or kupuna? No, it's funny because um, I always reach out and kind of give people some physical t contact if they feel, if I get excited, I tend to leave if, they're, if their ignorance shows. Because it's, it's not, I, I don't want to reach out to ignorant people. I want to reach out to people who are open and willing to learn. And then we can just guide them over to books and say, take your time if you have, down when we were in downtown, it happened quite a bit because it was a lot of business people. But we became a pu'uhunu for people who knew everyone is welcome here. I, I am just trying to hold steady on the, the models that are inclusive, that have aloha at their core, because if we can't be reverent with each other, the, 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 what we're recognizing each other, then we didn't learn anything from our kupuna. So, 
the fact that we're still here despite what happened to us is pretty profound and that we can manifest and you know you look at how young Hawaiians they are charging it in every possible model they don't necessarily have to have the kind of slightly self-effacing you know of our kupuna mm -hmm. but they cannot forget that their source their root is still kindness mm -hmm. and the aloha that we have you work with a lot of different entrepreneurs I do wide range in ages what would your recommendations or suggestions or tips be for upcoming entrepreneurs who's maybe watching this who's probably been striving to get their business going or mm -hmm. get at least settled in their business what would be some recommendations to them? Well, you know, the truth is you need someone who's really peely with you in terms of banking and, and monetary support. So that's part of that, that um, kind of skill set that you need. And OHA has a lot of loan products that are really, really helpful. And being able to write, as funny as it sounds, a good business plan. And don't get excited. You know, you can get a model. You know, these are very straight up. But you have to understand what you're trying to accomplish and that the resources that you have will cover what you're trying to accomplish. And so the ability to be very, um, a lot of people, and I think we've talked about this before, people are very enthusiastic and they go out and they imagine that dream that they see in front of them, but it has to start small and real. So the idea that proper financing, proper understanding of your goals, talking to your ohana so that they understand what you're doing and leaning on models that come out of your Hawaiian sense of who you are. Mm -hmm. Ask for permission, ask for support. To start something, if you can get your, the support of your family so you don't have to go to an arm's length banker. You know, OHA at 4%, it's one third of what anyone's gonna lend you money. But start small and real because you don't wanna put yourself at risk or your family at risk. But there's no reason to believe you're not gonna be successful if you really understand what you're trying to accomplish and if it also includes who you are that's unique in the world and most likely it's that you're Hawaiian and you're doing it in Hawaii. So that opening better have everybody, your neighbors, family, friends, high school, everybody and their brother because that's how we can support each other as a community. Mm -hmm. Now I do know that it is, you know, giving up is, is so easy. Yeah. yeah. What is your uh, trick? to not giving up, <laughs> if there's one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I laugh, some people say, wow, you're still, you know. My, my thing is um, to understand that mistake making, mistake is just um, part of a process, and people should not get excited about that process of learning. You know, the ability to forgive yourself and start again. The next day that you wake up, that, that um, thing that you're doing, because you're learning through your own process, maybe you have to, be present. So through all of that process, you can never think that today is the day I'm not going to do it. You have to think that today is the day it's going to change and just stay. That holomoa energy is very, very that's, important. That's so cool. It just brings up, I, I, I try to always have those messages of aloha in my mind from Auntie Pilahi Paki and mm -hmm. when you mention that ahonui pops up, there's a difference between Western mentality of patience and the Hawaii mentality of ahonui. And from how I heard it was patience is waiting for this moment, not yeah. knowing if it's going to happen. It's yeah. just going to happen. You just, you just got to wait. I don't know if it will. You just got to wait. And then Ahonui is patient knowing that that moment it's is going to happen. It's it could coming. be five minutes or 50 days or 50 years down the road or not even your lifetime. We are manifestors. Mm -hmm. We are manifestors. I think about all the iterations that you've gone through. So we can make things happen because we can access our kupuna and our sense of who we are. So you are 100% right. The canoe guys, they stay steady and the destination comes, mm -hmm. you know. That we think like differently. Mm -hmm. So just stay present and continue to do your good work. And one day, you'll be there. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a belief system. Mm -hmm. And I, we are manifestors. I 100% agree. The moment you fall out in your faith, everybody else yeah. is going to fall out. Yeah, it's the truth. Now, with everything you've gone through, your experiences, watching other vendors and artists and entrepreneurs go through their ups and downs, that word aloha is so simple, but holds so much kauna and hidden meanings. Mm -hmm. What does aloha mean to you? Well, you know, I'm in the Producers Network community now, where I'm working with people who 
we have a community lace den at Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. Anyone who wants to sell lay can sell lay. If anyone's listening and you want to sell lay, come. <laughs> but the point is, it gives us a chance to be like this with strangers. So I get to practice my aloha. I thought it was like a, a, a revenue generating opportunity for community, but what it actually is is for me to practice my aloha. So aloha is to absolutely positively affirm other, the sacredness of other. So I put everything down when someone uh, purchases a lei and, and it's for them. So I come around, I look them in the eye, I give them the lei and I aloha them because I want to witness my ability to love and to honor the God in you, the sacred in you. And so it takes all of my concentration, but it's the beginning of me manifesting the ease of care for other, because the world is so divided now and so full of anger. So I think that my cousin Mihana, who is a beloved example, she says, Miley, the gift that we have to give the world is aloha. And it's really understanding that each person deserves our complete love and kindness. And so it's a practice. It's a daily practice. <laughs> I tell that to everybody too. They think you're supposed to be the aloha person. I'm like, aloha is so hard to deal it with. It is, and it's so Super maligned hard. and yeah. stomped on, and it's you know aloha this, that, yeah. and the other thing. But we know what it is. Yeah, and we well, have to live it. Thank you. I mean, Yay. I wish we can have so much more time to talk about, but these half an hour episodes go by so <laughs> fast. We're gonna have to. I say this every episode, oh. expand it to an hour. Mm. But mahalo nui, oh, auntie, yeah, oh, yeah. and I really, really appreciate it. Do um, you have a website that we can direct people to? We do, but more importantly, just come here. But it's mm -hmm. nameahawaii.com, and it's also Alpuni Space, SolomonEnos.com. Just come and join us. And where? What is the address of this location? The address is very hard. Entrance on Oahu Street. It's Ward Center. And it's yeah. 1200 Ala Moana Boulevard, but it's, you know, parallel Ala Moana, where Wood Warehouse was. Come down Oahi and you'll find us. Turn in where Piggy Smalls is. Last question. Yes. When vendors, or not vendors, when customers leave this store, purchasing something or not purchasing something, what is your hopes that they walk away with? A, a little deeper understanding of um, how to be in the presence of a Hawaiian way of being which is to aloha and to just to share and, and just share. Thank you, Auntie. So simply put. Oh my gosh, chicken skin this whole no, episode. No, you're so funny. <laughs> Come on, and, and again, I am so grateful and happy for the work that you're doing for our people. So bless you. Thank you, Auntie. Mm -hmm. Well, it only, help, it only works when people like you <laughs> step in and help We're all me, in it so. together. We're all in it together. Mahalo nui. And again, we're here on Olelo Channel every Friday of the first Friday of every month the new episode airs replays itself every Saturday excluding the fifth Saturday of that month replaying this particular episode of that month and of course every Thursday on KHON 2 at about the 8 o'clock hour in the morning we have our Aloha Authentic street name segments where we highlight the street names around our islands to delve into more Hawaiian culture and history now that's all the time we have so Mahalo nui, and again, catch up on all past episodes on alohaauthentic.org. For myself and Auntie Maile, mm. have a great day. Aloha. Ahui ho. Ahui ho. Malama. <laughs>